Uh, as we look uh, broader scale, Mike, at the ACC, obviously coming off a banner season, winning the national championship, winning nine of 12 bowl games, uh, just a conference that aside from Florida State, just removing ourselves just a few years was looked upon as it was kind of default, the worst conference out of the power five. And whether that was true or not, I think it was probably debatable that it was in that discussion. And with the emergence or reemergence of the likes of Virginia Tech, in, in particular North Carolina, Miami, in that coastal division, and with Clemson moving it up a notch from that top 10 status to arguably the best program in the country, uh, the ACC just has everything uh, on its side right now coming into uh, 2017. Yeah, certainly. And a really strong season, winning a national championship for a second time in in four years. I mean, that was significant. I think when looking at the conference as a whole, obviously a lot of people were surprised that they were able to win as many bowl games as they did and kind of cement themselves as the top conference in college football this past season. Uh, the long-term prospects of the ACC, I have a little bit of concern about. Um, although Virginia Tech and North Carolina and Miami are kind of returning back to the landscape in the ACC coastal, and the ACC Atlantic, of course, with Louisville, Florida State, Clemson being the uh, perennial powerhouses that they are uh, consistently now, you know, being up in the top 10, top 15 range and being in the college football playoff discussion. I, while I think that's good for the conference, I do think the one cause of concern, especially heading into next season, is the attrition across the board in the conference. Obviously, you look at the defending national champions now, the Clemson Tigers, they have to return. I mean, they have to replace so many uh, pieces on the offensive side of the football of course, with Deshaun Watson highlighting the group, but then you don't look much further. It's Mike Williams, uh, Jordan Leggett, Wayne Gallman at running back. Uh, they got to replace some pieces on defense as well. Uh, you look at Florida State, they're returning a lot of guys um, on both sides of the ball, so they're obviously going to be the favorite in the Atlantic Division. While you have Louisville uh, returning Lamar Jackson, uh, they have to replace some pieces on defense, which is a cause for concern. And then the Coastal is where the real fun starts because I think this is as wide open a division as it's been in quite some time. Virginia Tech, obviously, all the talent that they're replacing on offense, they're defending Coastal champions. They lose Gerard Evans. They lose Marshawn Williams, Shai McKenzie, uh, obviously Bucky Hodges, Isaiah Ford. So it's going to be a completely different-looking offense next season for Virginia Tech. You look at Miami losing to Joku at tight end. They're losing Brad Kaya at quarterback. North Carolina replacing Mitch Trubisky. It's wide open, Mark, in the ACC heading into next season. And the the real discussion is going to be just how good is a guy like Nikosi Perry, who looks to be the heir apparent to Brad Kaya at Miami? How good is Josh Jackson for Virginia Tech? What's North Carolina going to do at the quarterback position? Is Duke going to return to being an 8-9 and nine win team? That's another question that we're going to have to watch for. Obviously, Duke is one of the sleepers in the ACC Coastal, in my opinion, because they're obviously coming off a year in which they missed a bowl game after having that impressive string that David Cutcliffe got the Blue Devils on, in which they were a top-five offense in the conference for a number of seasons, and a team that was competing, um, was in the ACC championship once, and was competing uh, with eight and nine wins into uh, really impressive bowl games for that program. They have a good, good young quarterback in Daniel Jones, the running back issues, the offensive line issues, the injury bug really hit them hard this past year. But I think Duke's schedule sets up nicely for them to potentially return to eight or nine wins, and that's one sleeper to watch uh, in the ACC Coastal specifically. Across the way in the Atlantic, if you want to look at a sleeper real quick, I think NC State is a nice candidate just because they're returning a quarterback in Ryan Finley. They have a, a, some nice pieces on the offensive side of the ball, and their defense kind of improved as the season went on, even as the offense kind of fell off a little bit. So. Dave Doran has that program heading in the right direction as well. And I think it's a wide open ACC heading into next season. But I do worry a little bit just because there are going to be so many newcomers that I think the conference as a whole will likely take a step back, opening the way up for, of course, the SEC to return as a top conference in college football. Mike, we've talked uh, football too much, I think, too many times. Uh, you knew exactly where I was headed next, and that was in the sleeper category. So you set us up with Duke out of the Coastal, NC State on the other side as, as your two sleeper teams, right? Yep. All right. Mike McDaniel from inside the ACC. Join him right there. Football, baseball, basketball. Obviously, we're headed toward March Madness, but he's keeping us up to date definitely on what's happening uh, in college football in the ACC as we head toward spring practice. And you may see me on there from time to time as well. Mike, we always appreciate the time. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.